What's up, Scandalites and Says So Squad? This is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video. This video is going to be about the handsome Mr. Teddy Pendergrass. And before we get started, I want to give a couple of shout outs. The first person is another YouTuber. His name is Roderick, and he has a channel called Roderick's World. He is a local friend, and he's always been very supportive. He shared my stuff before I had all of these subscribers. And I would like to return the favor. Um, I'll put the link of his YouTube channel in the description. When you guys get a chance, go check him out. You may like what you see, and you may want to subscribe. The second person is Michelle C. Wright. Hey, Michelle. I appreciate what you did, girl. I am so grateful for that. Now, let's go ahead and get to the story. Theodore Doris Pendergrass was born on March 26, 1950 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was the only child of Jesse and Ida Geraldine Pendergrass. While Theodore, a.k.a. Teddy, was still a little boy, his father, Jesse, abandoned the family. As a matter of fact, Jesse left so early that Teddy actually had no recollection or memory of his father. He first ended up meeting his father when he was about 11 or 12 years old, and that did not last long because his father was killed a few weeks later. He got stabbed to death in 1962. Ida tried very hard to raise Teddy on a different path from what his father had taken. And so she used to take him to church all the time, like all the time. And Teddy became fascinated with the church. He loved it. As a matter of fact, he wanted to become a pastor. And the church entertained him. And at 10 years old, they ordained him as a minister and a junior deacon. Child, Teddy probably was hollering and shouting all over the place. As he got older, he started to attend Thomas Edison High School for Boys, but he dropped out in the 11th grade because he wanted to start a music career. But before he started a music career, Teddy stopped listening to his mama and he started hanging around with a bad crowd of boys. And hanging around with these boys got him hemmed up on charges for a crime that he did not commit. And he was sent to a juvenile detention center for a while. Eventually, Teddy did pursue his dream and he recorded a song called Angel with Muddy Feet. And the song didn't go anywhere, which I'm sure it didn't. Listen to the title, Angel with Muddy Feet. I mean, is this a compliment or are you putting the woman down? Is she an angel or are her feet muddy? Uh, pick one, Teddy. You're doing too much already. When the song flopped, Teddy became discouraged and very insecure about his voice. So he gave up singing in order to play the drums. And he was very good at the drums. He played for the Cadillacs, he played for Little Royal Torrance, and he played for Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. At this time, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes were not a big time group. They were like a local big group. You know, everybody knew their name locally, but yeah, if you went outside of Philadelphia, ain't nobody know who Harold them was. But they were big enough and good enough to sign with Philadelphia International Records in 1971. But even after they signed their record deal, they still were having trouble finding a hit. And that is because the writers, Leon Huff and Kenny Gamble, were having a hard time writing a hit song for them. They didn't really know what to do with this group because this group did not have a strong male lead. Harold Melvin was okay, but Harold Melvin's voice was kind of like your typical voice. You know, he didn't have any power with it. It was kind of soft. It wasn't strong. They were looking for something else. So one day, the whole group is in rehearsal at the studio, and everybody's singing. You know, they're just kind of humming to themselves, and Teddy's playing on his drums, and he's singing to himself. And the whole time he's singing, Leon and Kenny are like, boy, why come you ain't tell us you can sing like that? And Teddy is like, that, me? And they're like, yes, you. And Teddy was like, okay, I mean, what y'all want me to do? And they were like, listen, we got a song for you. We want you to get your behind over here and record this song called I Miss You. And that's what Teddy did. And child, the song was the bomb. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to act like that. But y'all, that is my favorite song by Teddy Pendergrass. Oh, I, oh, I, I miss you, baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, Teddy sang that song like that was the whole reason he was in existence. And I'm bigging Teddy up right now. And of course, he sung the song great and he is the bomb. But honey, he is not what made that song for me. Let me tell y'all what made that song for me. That's right. Lloyd Parks falsetto. Honey, when Lloyd Parks hit that note in the beginning, child, I just about fell out, honey. That is my part, and that is my song. But, honey, let me throw this little piece in here also. Let me tell you somebody who I think sang that song better than Teddy Pendergrass. Baby, that is David Ruffin. He came out with his own version of the song, and he 
killed it. It's just like David had more of a, a crying voice, like a begging, a pleading. He just trying, trying. That's how he was singing. Y'all can't sing it like him. But anyway, I'm going to put the link in the description. Please go listen to how David sung this song. David killed that song, baby. And while y'all sitting up there giggling and laughing, I am not the only one that liked that song. A lot of people liked that song. And like I said, it was a hit for Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. And then they followed it up with something that would become a major hit. And that was, if you don't know me by now, child, I can't even explain the way folks felt. When Teddy hit that, hey, hey, it was over with, baby. Folks just going crazy. They needed to hear more of Teddy Pendergrass. And another thing, that hey, hey, put that song on the map in a big way. It made it to the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. And it brought Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes mainstream success. And with this success, it became pretty clear to most people that Teddy Pendergrass was the true star of this group. And it became even more evident that Teddy Pendergrass was the star when he got his hair cut like Muscle Man from the regular show, and it did not dim his light at all. And Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, they were okay without him, but they could not achieve the heights of glory that they did with Teddy as the front man. And Teddy's lead singing career brought more than just the hits, honey. It brought the women. And in 1974, he fathered three children, three children in one year. Their names were Tisha, LaDonna, and Theodore Jr. Even that story makes it clear just how popular Teddy was getting. And with his popularity rising more and more, Harold Melvin is sitting in the corner and he's getting more and more angry. And I can imagine he's saying stuff like, you know, say, man, what you doing, Jive Turkey? This my group, you know, or something like that. I don't know, y'all. But he was getting extremely jealous of this young upbeat. And the more jealous he got, the less of a good thing that was for Teddy. Because, see, Harold was a very serious man. And he had very bad connections with the underworld in Philadelphia. It is said that one of his associates was drug kingpin Tyrone Fat Palmer. And this guy was a very bad guy and he didn't mind murdering people or doing what he needed to do to get his money. But even though Harold Melvin is extremely jealous, he starts to mellow out a bit because he's like, you know, why am I jealous? Like, okay, he's getting the attention. He's the lead singer, but let me use him as a puppet. Let me keep him propped up there and the money will continue coming to me. And Chai, he was right about the money coming to him because Harold was the only one that was making money in that group. Not only was he not paying Teddy, he wasn't paying any of the other members of the group either. And his plan actually worked for a little while. Teddy was a puppet because he was so concerned with this newfound fame. You know, he's the lead singer. He's getting attention from the ladies. People are praising him. And the ironic thing about it, it's people that are praising him is what opens his mind because they're like, hey, hey, Harold Melvin, Harold, hey, you can sing good. And Teddy is like, no, my name is Teddy. I shot. Right, you're Harold Melvin and you sing great. And Teddy is like, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. I'm putting in all the work leading all the songs and it's Harold Melvin that's getting the praise. And then he started thinking about it. It's also Harold Melvin that's getting all of the money. So Teddy goes up to Harold and he's like, uh, Harold, I need to be paid more money. And not only that, I want you to call the group Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes featuring Teddy Pendergrass. And Harold Melvin is like, boy, what did you say to me? And Teddy is like, uh, yeah, I need you to make those changes. And Harold Melvin was like, boy, if you don't get out my face if I bust your head to the white meat. And so Teddy is like, okay, well then if you cannot do this, I'm leaving the group. And Harold was like, okay, bye. I mean, what's stopping you? And then Teddy called his bluff. And that is when he actually did try to leave the group. And I say tried because when he let his plans be known that he was leaving the group, Harold Melvin told him that you cannot leave the group. If you leave this group, boy, I get somebody to blow your head off. I get somebody to kill you. And these were very serious threats. I done told you about his connections to the underworld. So Teddy took these threats seriously. And I'm sure he was shaking in his boots, but Teddy wanted to have his own thing going on. He couldn't let those threats stop him. So he ended up leaving the group. And baby, when he left, the only thing he did leave with was his life. Because Harold ain't gave that man no money, honey. Teddy was broke as a joke. But see, what Harold and the others didn't know is that Teddy wasn't no fool. You think this man didn't know what to do with his newfound status? Child, this man knew that he had charm, he knew he had charisma, and he knew he had good looks. And he also knew how to work women with that charm, charisma, and good looks. And baby, he worked a whole line of women. 
because he was trying to see which woman could do what for him. So here he goes, going through woman after woman after woman. And then finally, he found his winner. And her name was Tasmia Lane. And child, I can only imagine the game that Teddy put on this woman. Because you have to remember, he's virtually unknown. Don't nobody know the name Teddy Pendergrass? They mostly know him by face. And even sometimes they don't know him by that. So he had to possess some sort of super qualities to get a woman like Tasmia Lane. And you're probably wondering why I'm making a big deal about her. And that's because Tasmia Lane wasn't just no ordinary woman. She had been married to NFL football player Izzy Lane. She had class and she also socialized with big name celebrities. But most importantly, she had money and she had respect. And word on the street is that this girl was smart. I mean, really smart. And you're about to find out just how smart she was in just a minute. But anyway, to sum it up, Teddy meets Taz. She's impressed by him and he's majorly impressed by her beauty and her resume. They hook up and he moves into her house. And as soon as Teddy gets in the house, honey, he starts putting the work in. He starts buttering her up. He starts complimenting her, telling her things she wants to hear. And he's also giving her those good Teddy Pendergrass style love making sessions. And after a few of these sessions, Taz is very buttered up. Child, y'all know what I'm talking about. She starts winking and smiling at him every time she walk by. You know, he hitting on the behind, all in her ear. You know, ooh, girl, you looking good. Mm, I want to eat you up. You know, and she, <laughs> boy, you need to stop. Stop. Go on now. Don't be playing with me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And now that Teddy has her where he wants her, that's when he drops the bomb. He wants to go solo and he wants her to manage his career. And you may be thinking like, why would Teddy want this random woman to manage his career? But honey, I done told you before, Taz was not no slouch. This woman owned businesses, particularly hair salons and her hair salons catered to celebrities. So she knew what she was doing. And Teddy knew that a woman with these type of smarts would know how to write and read contracts. She would know how to manage his business. She knew how to speak well, and she would be a great asset on his team. So he asks her, and Taz is like, ah, uh, you know, I don't know. And he's like, please, please. And finally, she says yes. Teddy is like, yes, 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 honey, I did it. But see, he's not all the way finished because there's one more thing he needs to ask. And y'all should kind of have an idea of what this is because Teddy ain't had no money. So he starts working double time, you know, giving her those good Teddy Pendergrass love making sense. He's flooding her with compliments all in her ear. You know, he's doing all this stuff double time, honey. And right when he thinks he's got her where he wants her, he drops the bum on her. Can he borrow $15,000 to open up his own production company? And when he asks her this, Taz is like, well, I don't, I, hold on, hold on now, sir. I mean, we're having fun. I love you and stuff, but $15,000, I don't know. I don't know, Teddy. And Teddy is like, okay, I understand. I got you, little mama. If you front me this $15,000, I will give you 10% of royalties from my first album. Or that's what he says. He claims he only told her 10% of royalties from his first album. Okay, let's get that clear. And so Taz, who we know is a ruthless businesswoman, is like, you know, deal. Okay, we can do that. And so she fronts him the money, and as soon as she does, Teddy gets to work. He goes in the studio, and he creates magic. He released a song called I Don't Love You Anymore, which was a disco hit, and then he released a song called The Whole Town's Laughing At Me, which was a top 20 R&B hit. His career is off to a great start. Teddy is ecstatic. He's getting money, he's getting more fame, and he's celebrating, and he's taking Taz along every step of the way. And Taz is really enjoying this. He's taking her out on the town. They're having fun together. And Taz starts falling deeper and deeper in love. And she wasn't the only one. Teddy looked at her like she was the center of his world, the love of his life, and his backbone. One day, Teddy has the googly puppy eyes, and he's thinking about it. You know, I love that little woman. How was I so fortunate to hook a lady like this? She's so smart. Like, she's supporting me. She gave me money. She knows how to write contracts. As a matter of fact, let me look at this contract she wrote. Oh, look at my baby. She's so smart. And so he's reading the contract, you know. He's all gushy-eyed. And then soon, the smile drops from his face. And then, y'all, his eyes get squinted like this. 
And he's reading and he's like, wait a minute. I know I don't see what I think I see. He just can't believe it, honey. Somebody could have threw a cup of water in his face. He was so shocked. And he was shocked because he noticed that Taz had let him sign a paper that gave her 10% of not only his first album, but 10% royalties on all future endeavors. Like any proceeds he brought in, whether it's from albums or shows or whatever it was, she was getting 10% of that money. And so immediately Teddy is enraged because he feels like he's been tricked. And he's like, dang, I shouldn't have never trusted nobody else. This is the same type of crap that Harold Melvin tried to pull on me. Why would she try to do this? I trusted her. So he goes to Taz and he's like, hey, you know, what's this about? And she's like, uh, 10%. And he's like, uh, no, ma'am. I meant 10% from my first album sales and you need to change this. And Taz is like, uh, no, sir. I'm not changing nothing. I put in all the hard work. I got the contracts together. I fronted you the money. Like, I'm not changing nothing. And Teddy was like, uh, baby, you can have that little 15 grand. That's chump change. I don't need that. I'll give you that money back with interest. But you need to change this contract. And Taz was like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not changing nothing. And so now both have found out that that relationship is not all it was cracked up to be. Because Taz is feeling like, okay, you love me or said you did, but you don't love me enough for me to be set up and taken care of for the rest of my life. And Teddy is like, okay, you're supposed to love me, but you don't love me enough to try to jip me. You knew I meant the first album. Why would you try to jip me out of my money? You know, so they're bumping heads at this time and Teddy starts to hang out with his homeboys. Those same homeboys that he hung out with when he was a teenager. And a lot of those guys never did make it out of that bad lifestyle. So these guys are grimy now. They are true gangsters. And it's a rumor that a lot of them were part of the Philadelphia Black Mafia. And so Teddy is around these type of guys and he's running off at the mouth. You know, he's mad. I can't believe Tasmania, she's supposed to be my girl, but she's sitting up here fooling me. You know, she basically got me locked under contract with her. Like, what am I going to do? I can't stand this. I can't believe it. And shortly after Teddy was heard having those type of conversations with those type of friends, Tasmaya Lane ended up in a horrible situation. And that was in April of 1977. When she was coming home from somewhere she had been that day, it was her and her preteen son in the car. And they pulled up to their house and Tasmaya got out of the car. As soon as she stepped out of the car, a gunman that was hiding in the bushes shot her one time and the bullet pierced her chest. And she died right there in front of her son. She was only 31 years old. Now, police said that they believed that somebody was trying to scare her and they mistakenly killed her. But the streets, child, they said it wasn't no mistake in it. Baby, as soon as Taz's body hit the ground, the rumors started. And those rumors were saying that Teddy put a hit out on that lady. And like I said, this is all rumor and speculation. Nobody has proven this as fact. But when Teddy showed up at her funeral, Baby, it might as well have been fact, baby, people was treating him like he was the killer. Like he was the killer and had just walked up in there. Nobody necessarily said anything to him, but it was the way that they were behaving towards him and the way that they were looking at him. As a matter of fact, Jesse Jackson, who was delivering her eulogy, got up in all his splendor and started saying stuff, you know, like, who would do such a thing? You know, why did this happen? And the whole time he's saying it, he's looking at Teddy up and down like, yeah, who would do this? Who would do this thing? Why would somebody do this to her? Basically letting everybody in the vicinity know that he felt like Teddy had something to do with Taz's death. And honey, Teddy is looking around like, you know, everybody eyes on him. Jesse eyeing him up and down, basically pointing him out that he was the killer. Child, Teddy got hot up under the collar, honey. He got upset and he also got scared. So he took his tail and he got up out of there. So now, Tasmaya Lang has passed away, and Teddy is eventually released from his contract with her. And during all this drama and afterwards, he's steadily making music. And I guess now he's got the weight lifted off his shoulder since he don't have to worry about sharing his money or something. Because this time when he steps in the studio, he makes the hits, the ones that we all know. You know, he's making stuff like Turn Off the Light, Close the Door, uh, Love TKO, the big time hit. And these big hits are putting him on the big time map. And he's making more money than he has ever seen. And the women are not just vying for his attention now. Oh no, baby, no. They hollering, screaming, fainting and everything. Just when he walked by, child. And it was the hollering and screaming that he liked most. And you know why? Because this time they were saying Teddy. Teddy, Teddy. They actually knew his name, guys. It was no longer Harold Melvin. They knew his name was Teddy Pendergrass, and this let him know that he had made it. And since he had made it, Teddy felt like everything belonged to him. 
even other men's wives. And that is when he started an affair with Jan Gay, Marvin Gay's wife. And it is said that like every time him and Jan met up, like Marvin would be following them and he'd be like sitting outside of restaurants and stuff like that. But my thing is what you sitting outside for? Brother, you might as well go on up in there and let them know how you feel. And Jan, I believe she was sleeping with a lot of folks anyway. Child, Marvin would have done better by just going ahead and moving on. Although he was not a saint either. But that'll be coming up in the Marvin Gaye video. So Teddy is having the time of his life and now he is doing shrooms, cocaine, quaaludes, anything that you can name, Teddy is doing it. And he's also becoming very, very full of himself. It's like he knew he was the bum, you know, getting women with no problem. So he felt like he was the man. He felt like, you know, nobody could touch him. He was the best looking thing and just very arrogant. Teddy was so sure of himself that when somebody in his camp suggested that he start doing like ladies only shows where only women would be allowed into the audience, Teddy was like, yeah, honey, he answered that with no hesitation. You know, other folks probably would have been scared because they're like, you know, I need to make sure I sell out this show. Teddy was not worried about that. He knew that even if it was just women, that he was going to sell out his shows. And he was right, baby. Audience was packed every night. The women was just in there getting nasty too, child. I guess they didn't have to have their boyfriends and husbands watching them. So they in there taking their panties off and throwing it on stage and showing their body and trying to climb on stage to kiss him and stuff and all waiting in the back room for him and, you know, just acting crazy like they ain't had no man at home. Ooh! Some of y'all women just get too loose for me, baby. Success, success, success. For Teddy Pendergrass and now that success had arrived at his door it was time for him to spend some money on things that he'd always wanted so he bought himself a 34 room mansion he's buying himself all kind of watches all kind of clothes furs everything that he has is new and in the now he also buys himself cars amongst them there's a Maserati and a Rolls Royce and he loved that green Rolls Royce and this would have been all fine if he hadn't had such a huge ego it's like he thought he was god and he thought he was above everybody else he talking to grown men and women like they ain't nothing he's also riding around in his flashy car speeding because it's been said multiple times that teddy loved to drive fast so he's speeding you know everywhere he goes and the police got their eye on him because first of all he black he in a nice car and he's speeding so every chance they get they're pulling him over so he had a terrible history with the police but back to him talking to people any kind of way. Child, somebody should have been like, uh, don't do me, sir. Especially while you sitting up there selling these so-called teddy bear jeans while women sitting up there looking like they poofed up in the front and the back. Boy, don't do me if I have to tell you all. That's what somebody should have told him, but I guess they was all scared of him. It's very, very clear that Teddy Pendergrass is what? Say it with me, doing too much. And he was still doing too much when the day of March 18th, 1982 came around. On this night, Teddy had went to a very popular club in Philadelphia. And he has his day. They're drinking, having a good time. And before long, Teddy is ready to go home. But before he can walk out of the door, somebody spots him. A very pretty lady by the name of Tanika Watson. And she walks over there to him. Uh, uh, uh. And she's like, hey, you remember me? And Teddy is like, I, I don't know, baby. Refresh my memory. And she's like, boy, you tried to holler at me back in the 70s. But you was riding around in your Rolls Royce hanging out the window screaming. And I thought you was a pimp, so I didn't pay you no never mind. Uh, but see, I see that you're Teddy Pendergrass now. So I was wondering, you want to give a girl another chance? Can I go home with you? And he thought Tanika was better looking than his date or something. Because, child, he left his date at the club. And he and Tanika got into the car and drove off. Now, rumor says when they get inside of the car, they start a body party. And they kissing and loving all over each other. And pretty soon, Tanika starts to get lower and lower and lower to do some business. And apparently, Teddy got so excited by this that his foot got heavy on the gas pedal. And before you know it, they were wrapped around the tree. And supposedly, when the police arrive, they find Tanika not really hurt. She's doing okay. But they find Teddy with his pants wrapped around his ankles. This story is kind of hard for me to believe because why would this man pants be wrapped around his ankles? But child, I guess after they crashed, he was already paralyzed. So maybe he couldn't pull him back up. But I don't know. It just still sounds ridiculous. To me. Either way it goes, though, Teddy is rushed to the hospital in critical condition. And Tanika is questioned by the police. And it is found out that she is a transgender. 
She was born a man and now she identified as a woman. That's the first version of this story. The second version says Tanika and Teddy were in the car, you know, and they're all loving on each other and Teddy is rubbing on her. And that is when he rubs something that is not so womanly and he's like, ah, and he gets the surprise of his life, honey. And foot got heavy on the pedal, crashed into a tree. This version gets another side eye from me. Y'all know y'all wrong out there. Let's move on to the third version. This version says that it was Tanika, Teddy, and Turquoise Irving, Dr. J's wife, in the car together. They're all kissing on each other, you know, and Teddy, once again, is just so surprised by the different flavors of women in his mouth that his foot gets heavy on the gas pedal and he ends up wrapped around the tree. But in this version, while Tanika and Teddy are still laid out in the car, Turquoise jumps out the car and starts running down the street, child. She running with them low-level 80s pumps on and that flowy dress just flowing in the wind and she just getting it, baby. She gone. And she was running so fast that by the time the police and the paramedics out there, child, she was just a speck in the distance, honey. All they saw was something flowing in the wind and that was her 80s dress. And they said she was getting smaller and smaller by the minute, baby. She was gone so fast. Let's move on to the fourth version. In this version, it was Tanika, Teddy, Turquoise, all in the car together, okay? They're still kissing and everything. The difference is, is that Dr. J was supposedly in a car behind them in this version, okay? So he's following them to get to wherever they're going. And once again, Teddy's foot got heavy on the gas and boom, they're wrapped around the tree again. But in this version, apparently Tanika and Teddy were knocked out and Dr. J pulled up by the car and was like, turquoise, turquoise. Get your tail in this car and let's go, girl. Let's go. We ain't finna get caught up in this foolishness. And so Turquoise got out again and ran and jumped in the car with her husband and they drove off. Child, I know all of these versions sound crazy to me and I don't think really neither one of them is truly true. But, you know, this is a gossip tea video and I had to give y'all all of the gossip and tea. What is known as mostly fact, though, is that Tanika Watson and Teddy Pendergrass were in the car together. It is not proven that she had went down or anything like that. They were in the car, and Tanika actually said that the car started speeding up and that she was getting scared, and she saw that Teddy was kind of scared because he didn't have any control over the car. So soon he was trying to hit his brakes, and the brakes wouldn't work, and that is when they ended up wrapped around the tree. The police and the paramedics came. Teddy was so scared when police were going to take him and do something to him because, you know, he had bad history with the police and he was scared that they were going to, like, teach him a lesson for being that flashy black man. Luckily, that did not happen, though. Teddy made it to the hospital without incident. Like I said, he's listed in critical condition. And when he wakes up, y'all, he is shocked out of his mind to find out that his whole life has changed. He is paralyzed from the neck down. The tall, stout, strong, arrogant, and sexy Teddy Pendergrass can't even feed himself anymore. He had to rely on others for even his most basic needs. And this was a totally humbling experience for Teddy Pendergrass. And you know, Teddy is having a hard time processing this. He starts getting mad and he starts looking for somebody to blame, Harold Melvin. He was basically saying Harold Melvin was trying to make good on his promise to kill him because he left the group. But I mean, by this time he had been gone from the group at least six, seven years. So if that's the case, Harold show sure waited a long time. And it is said that once they checked the Rolls Royce, there was evidence that his brakes had been tampered with. But Teddy said that he also had somebody check the other cars at his house and all of those brakes had been tampered with too. He also started to think that it was the police department. Did they cut the brakes on his Rolls Royce? But in the end, there were no charges filed against Harold Melvin or the police department. And Rolls Royce ended up paying a settlement to Teddy Pendergrass due to the faulty brakes on that Rolls Royce. Time moves on and Teddy is having a terrible time dealing with his condition. He's in like this, this bitter battle with himself and he doesn't understand why this happens to him. He's like, why was I allowed to get so high just for everything to start crashing down? And then I wasn't even at my pinnacle yet. Like I had just started to get my fame. I could have been a super duper star. You know, this is the way Teddy is feeling, so it's eating him up inside. Another thing that's eating him up is that Teddy had to find out the hard way about the public's attention span. They had moved on to the next best thing. Marvin Gaye and his sexual healing was in, and Teddy Pendergrass and his turn out the lights was out. 
So Teddy goes through life miserable for a while and then he ends up meeting a lady named Karen Steele. She was actually one of his backup dancers and they married in 1987. And it's obvious that she brought him joy because in 1988 he recorded his first chart topping number one song in forever and that song was called Joy. And this song went sky high because it was a good song and also people were glad to see him upbeat you know and happy and trying to make the best out of his situation. But sadly, any song that he recorded after this just didn't go anywhere. Things did not end up working out with his wife, Karen Steele, and they divorced in 2002. But in 2006, he met another pretty lady, and her name was Joan Williams. Teddy proposed to Joan after four months, and on March 23, 2008, they were married. On June 5, 2009, Teddy had to have surgery to remove colon cancer, and the surgery was successful but it left him with respiratory problems. Like even after he was released from the hospital, he kept having to come back the weeks after the surgery because he could not breathe. And then on January the 13th, 2010, at the age of 59, seven months after his surgery, Teddy Pendergrass passed away from respiratory failure. I hope you guys have enjoyed this old Hollywood scandalous tale of Mr. Teddy Pendergrass. And let me put this out there. If anybody has information on a story or you want me to tell your story, kind of like how the person did with Florence Ballard, if you want me to tell your story and you are an insider and you have good evidence, like legit stuff, not just something where y'all just sitting up there talking out your head, you know. If you do have legit stories that you were there, you guys can email me and let me know and I can tell your stories for you. Um, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, guys. Go ahead and comment. Let me know what you think. And... I will see you next time. Bye.